Hey there and welcome back. So we talked about deployment of Node.js and Express to Heroku and we have a, a working app here that is being uh, that is being deployed uh, remotely. We, we, we can see we have this URL there. So a really simple app that is uh, online on Heroku. But let's imagine that we had uh, a database or something that our app was connecting to and we want our remote app to also be able to connect to that. How can we do this? Well, we can see we have our .env file and it contains all the information, all the sensitive information that could be something called the database host or something. So there would be a database URL or something like um, my connection string or something that is uh, that has the information there. And then we would probably load this into our app. I'm not going to create a complete database uh, configuration here, but we would set up and connect to our DB here. So let's just simulate this. So let's do console write, uh, console lock here and print out process env and then it's called DB host. So we would probably do something like this. We would connect to a database. It could be MongoDB, it could be another type of database where we fetch the information from our env files. So if we run our uh, localhost version here, yeah, then we can see if we expand the terminal a little bit here, my connection string is being printed out. So our .env library is uh, fetching the information from our .env file and getting the db host setting and printing it out here. So we can easily use this connection string to connect to a database. But what do we do in Heroku when we have such information that we want uh, our application to work with? Uh, let's see here. Let's just close this terminal there. Because if we head over to Heroku, we can see in the settings, then we can click on a button called reveal configuration variables. And this will allow us to set kind of the same as we have in the env file. So we have to set up the same environment variables that we need uh, in our application. So we will create one called db host. And then we can say whatever configuration file we have. So I'm just going to write my uh, remote connection. Okay, so this is going to be the actual connection string you get from MongoDB, from Firebase, another database, uh, MSSQL, My, uh, MySQL, whatever database. So we click Add. So now we set this up. And of course, we have created this change in our server.js. So that is modified. That means that the version on Heroku doesn't know about it. So we need to commit this again and deploy it once again. So we will head back to the terminal and let's see here. So we do git add, so let's just do commit. So we just commit this here. And this will start to create the build process once again. And if we head over here, we can actually see live that the build is in progress. And we also set the, uh, the DB host config bar. So it's being built again. We can see just in a minute, it will finish up the build. So it has deployed it version five. We have right here. Okay. So if we head back, Probably there is not going to be a change or anything here because we don't want to print out our connection string directly in the app here. But if we want to get some information about, uh, you can see we used console.log here. So how can we see this in our remote application on Heroku? Well, we have a couple of handy commands we can use. Uh, we have the CLI where we can type Heroku and then logs and then we can use the flag called tail. So this will print uh, verbose logging information from the application. So basically we get the same information as we did or more uh, when we did the localhost version. So we can see here starting process with command node server.js and we get the printout here. My remote connection URL. 
that we specified in our environment variable here. So Heroku is actually fetching this information. is It is using this in the in the in the console.log in the process in VDB host. So we can use this now in our remote app as well to set up MongoDB or in another database. And another thing that is really handy is that we can see uh, immediately when we refresh the page, if we are accessing other routes, working with our application, that it will update. So it is, it is a really good tool to debug to see if we have any errors on Heroku. And if we want to, let's see here, oops, let's just terminate this window here. We can also do, we can do Heroku restart if we want the, uh, the dyno to uh, restart again. So then it says restarting dyno, and then we have a fresh application running. All right, so that was just uh, some extra bonus information about when we uh, deploy apps on Heroku, and there is, of course, much, much more. You can also set up a lot of these um, add-ons. You can uh, find more add-ons, and you can find databases. You can find a lot of different things that you connect to it. But somehow, if you uh, want to use a specific type of database, then maybe you need to upgrade your account. So uh, be aware of that, of course. But this is just a simple uh, ex explanation. And you can also do cloud databases, of course. If you have, uh, let's say you have a MongoDB Atlas database, then you just need this connection string. You don't need to uh, create the database inside Heroku. Okay, so uh, I hope you make this work and uh, have fun with this. Bye-bye.